Hello and welcome. My name is Nilaus and this is the third tutorial of Advanced Autonomous Industries. If you've not watched the two previous ones and you're completely unfamiliar with, with AAI, um, then please have a look. If you are familiar but just don't know how to do all the magic, then you can start from here. Now, in this case, uh, in this episode, we will be looking at how to do assignments of, uh, of, of zones to resources and how to clean it up after ourselves. Now, the very first thing we need to do is actually we need to do a tile scanner. So the very first thing we want to, this is the basic method. I am honestly not too keen on this method. Let's see, do I have room for everything here? I think I'll just put it up here. Yeah, there. So in this case, we take a zone scanner, the scans or tile scanner, against the content of the tiles. I will be, and in this tutorial, I think it's better for me to just, um, to actually show what I'm doing, to build it with you, instead of just uh, showing something that's done because it's really difficult to grasp the whole point of it. So I'm gonna try to build it in real time. Let's enable it. It scans a lot of good stuff. Now, this is, uh, we're gonna build it kind of the basic way. What we start out by doing up here is we wanna take, we're gonna take the input or all of this and scan it or and process it for a lot of things. First thing, I just wanna sort out the x coordinates and the y coordinates. There. So now we have the x and y coordinates. I will take those out red wire up here. They are now filtering anything for the red x and y. Okay. So the next part I want to do is actually look at the content that will do here. So this one says, well, what if at any given one, it is equal to that's right. I'd like that, right? Then in that case, I should give my signal that I want to indicate my sapphire for. Great. And let's do one more. Well, what if it is wood? Because those are the two resources I have nearby. Well, I'm going to mark that as a green woody color. So let's drag this in as well. Good. Now we have some input. You can see this flashes to blue once in a while. This doesn't flash to anything ever because I think it's more than 100 tiles away. And that's the re I'm going to do this one, but I don't particularly like it. The reason is, even though I have all of this area that is sapphirite, it's going to scan so much more that isn't sapphirite. And it's just going to go crazy just to scan that. And I know what's there. I can see it. But anyway, it, this is uh, how it is. So let's, let's now say, okay. On the output of these two, if anything, anything at all, if I'm from these two getting any input, because that would be nice, um, I take anything is greater than zero, then a big, big green flag. That indicates, yes, do something here. There is a resource that we need to assign. I'll put that on the green wire just for the hell of it. So, see, it sometimes flashes. Great. Now, what is it actually that I want to send in? Well, I want to send in that signal. So we'll just do normal one. And actually not. We'll do this one. I'm not sure if this one is technically needed. But... And I'll actually wire this one up as well. So you can see here, this transfers the blue signal. So whatever comes in goes out again. Well, combined with this, this, and this, then why don't we just put everything into this one? Make it a red signal. There. So now this gets a lot of signals, and sometimes there is a green signal. If there's a green signal, there's also a colored signal. Great. So why don't we say only pass it on when the green is greater? And in that case, I'll pass everything on. It doesn't matter, then I'll send it. So the, here we go. You can see the flash when it flashes. It flashes in both colors. And that's what we need to put into the zone controller because what we need to put into a zone controller is actually a zone indicator plus a coordinate. And that will do whenever there's either wood or um, sapphire. Let's do that and then hook it up with a nice little green wire. And then we should start seeing something here, which unfortunately is quite difficult. However, what we can do is we can put in a zone scanner here 
that we will then just just see if that actually scans anything and then we can use the number of signal to see how many are actually being uh, how many we actually have so here we have 77 already 77 have been indicated you can see here that it's actually a, a more of a purple than a blue it looks blue here but it's more purple now 112 let's also do a zone scanner zone scanning for these none it hasn't found any wood yet that's because it's actually too far away i think that's more than 100 away from it and that's that is exactly the reason why I don't like this one. It it's um, it, as I scale it up and then I say, all right, fine, then I'll say three hundred, right? That means it's three hundred by three hundred. That's in, I don't know what is it, ninety thousand squares that it has to process just to identify that something that's quite obvious. This is a forest, right? I know it's a forest, but it, there's no reason to spend ninety thousand ticks on it. 15 minutes of just scanning i think that is 15 minutes of just scanning but now it also is triggering things here we go it has identified nine of them that's good so that's one way of identifying the other way is of course the manual way of just saying look i know what this is this is sapphire the issue is of course you'll get outside the marks and if you assign someone it'll sign out so this one is the automatic scanner I'm not too keen on it, but it it's okay. Now the other is the next part of it is actually I want to send resources to it, and this is where it can get a bit dicey. But it's actually quite simple. So what I need to do, I'll build it over here. Here we have a zone scanner because I'm gonna input a zone. Let's do let's do for the first the proof of concept. I am going to input zone. We'll use the trees because they are. No, we're not. We're going to use that one. Yes, that goes in. Where is number one? It is located somewhere around here. There are 232 of them. Oh, that's cool. What about these? 55. So that's also increasing. It has uh, scanned more. Okay. Um, right. So we have. This one, what we then want to do is actually, again, we want to capture the X and Y coordinates. We have that already done. So let's just copy paste it. We mark it out on red wire. Yes. So we have the X and Y coordinates built it out. Now, the next part I want to do is actually just very, very simple. I mean, if I just wanted to make it extremely simple, I could just say, all right, send. Uh, where is it? The signal. Remember to use the signal minor vehicle ID one. Then that let's actually do a vehicle a vehicle or unit scanner just to make sure that we actually have this one available. Copy paste. Put it in here. It exists. Great. And it's almost moving. So there, here we will now use a unit controller because the unit controller will take a unit ID plus an X and a Y coordinate. That's funnily enough exactly what we have. Put it in. And then let's have a look. Is anything happening? Where is our? There it is. And that's really slow. And it's getting lost because it's probably going to, well, it could go to anyone. Now, let me just illustrate why this one is so risky. I have 114 of these. If we go down here, there is no guarantee in which sequence they are being scanned in. So there could be some like, Right there could be a green one, and that would suck. Or that one could be there. So if I just see, I mean, here we can see that there's a green. However, in, that is too risky to to assign them to, um, because I don't know, I don't have control of it. it. It's just basically choosing a random one in here. This one is going up there, and that's perfect. The last thing I want to show on in this one is actually. Um, uh, let's see. I want to show the let's clean up after ourselves part. There we go. Oh, sorry, uh, just okay. Also save. Let's see if we can build that. This is because this is a bit more complicated. This involves first a zone scanner. The reason we need the zone scanner 
it it um I'm just gonna build this and we'll see right so what we do is the first thing we do is actually we say uh in this one i really wanted to do it on something else yeah let's let's uh, do this right we take the blue one and we add one because that's the way we are iterating. So whatever it comes in, that's what goes out. Now the next part, this one is saying when this is less than, and then we use the signal quantity of type signal. The reason we use this is this will allow us to say to do a loop, right? So this loop here will get in here. And that will get, so at this point, it'll say issue one. But if we loop this one into that thing, then we put in a one that goes in here, becomes a two, a two is put in, that gives us a two output, and it goes back in and becomes a three. So once I link it up this one with that, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, because I am not marking any output. Great. Okay. Here we go. That's now iterating all the way up to 426. Great. So now we have an iterator over our zone. That's brilliant. Now the next part we want to do is we want to check that the content of this tile, the content of the tile, let's actually just take it from out here and in here. Yeah, so this checks the content of the tile. Well, let's let's then say uh, those are actually conditions here. I only want to say when this is when the amount of sapphire is zero, then we take the input count of x and of y. What this means is that basically this one will iterate. But when this will only trigger when it's empty. So because when it's empty, I should actually put this into a song controller without a reference. If I put it into a song controller without a reference to what zone it should be, it will clear the zone. So in this case, no output, they're not blinking. But what if I use this this one to just make a huge area here? Then they could work, hopefully. Once it iterates through, you can see the number is now 622, much higher than uh, it was earlier here. We'll, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed just to see that it will clean it up. Come on, clean it up. It should be the last IDs. So um, once we go beyond 550, it'll start scanning these. There we go. Look at that. It's interesting how it just skips some, but it's okay. It'll, it'll come back and, and fix those. This is extremely important because when this one it says this is found one great it's working there then it will it will run out at some point it'll mine it out and when it mines out it'll just get stuck but this way prevents that from happening by by always consistently iterating through the entire uh, entire zone just to clean it up and these will be cleaned up soon so you can see this is also the part that if you have too many it's going to take a long time to clean up However, it will clean up and again, clean every other, and then those will clean up in the next cycle. And those are the three things. Let's just recap. So this is an automatic zone assignment. I do not recommend using it. I use uh, the manual one uh, because it's going to scan so much. And these are these are actually quite uh, update, update sensitive. This is an assignment of, uh, of a specific truck to a specific uh, part. I will expand this further on into the more uh, generic form that will work for everyone. And this one is basically doing the cleanup, the cleanup for us. Let's see what number we are at. Let's just, there we go, cleaned up more and there's a few left. Okay, so now we have actually the capability to automatically identify, automatically assign and automatically re uh, remove the zone IDs. So that's uh, what we need for the very basics. So I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something. We are going to dive into the more advanced from here. Thank you for joining. See you next time. Bye.